what's the best known sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ? Sermon on the Mount. Now, the next sermon that we have in full in the Bible is his last public sermon, which was a sermon on the Mount of Olives. Uh, and it's there which is called the Oliver Discourse. We know it is very important because Gospel account to Matthew, Mark and Luke devote a full chapter in sequence for this particular sermon. So Matthew 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21. Almost in entirety, the entire chapter is devoted to this sermon. So it must be pretty important, isn't it? That the three synoptic gospels, synoptic meaning the three gospels that have the similar vision, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John's gospel also has Christ's story, but with a particular vision, so it's called the autoptic gospel. The three synoptic gospels have this last uh, public sermon of Christ in full. Now, we will try to get the chronological sequence of this message of Christ from Matthew because it opens yes first slide it opens with three questions that gives clarity to the nature of the subject he's handling Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be set there upon another that shall not be thrown down. So we, in the last series we, we did and we found that this prophecy was literally fulfilled because when the Romans invaded Jerusalem and surrounded Jerusalem with armies, in, in the late siege in 967, Siege went on till nine. Big part they laid siege from 67 A.D. and when the, when the siege continued in 70 A.D., Romans burned down the city, and the gold in the temple leaked or became liquid and went into all the crevices of the stones. So they physically, literally, dismantled stone by stone to get the gold out. Uh, when Jesus said that, he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, and Mark will say, Peter, James, John and Andrew came to him. Uh, tell us when will these things be? So the first question was about, when will this happen to the temple? Remember that. Second question, what will be the sign of your coming? Third question, what and of the end of the age, sign of your coming and of the end of the age. Can you see those three questions? Now, my suggestion is the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to get the big picture for them and describe rapidly certain signs up to the end of, up to the end and then took up the answer to the first question. When will the dismantling of the temple be? Okay. Now, we can just read it through and you will find out my suggestion is right. What is my suggestion? He first gave the big picture and then took up the specifics. He quickly gave a summary of what's going to happen till the end and what will determine the end and then took up this first question, when will this sign of uh, the dismantling of the temple be because Jews were very focused on that. So here we get the Lord answer in the big picture. Many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many. So that's the, those are religious signs. So there would be religious signs of people, uh, false Christ coming, other ways of salvation. So false Christ are outside Christianity. False prophets are inside Christianity. If you understood that you were way. False Christ means others who claim to be saviors. Whereas false prophets in, inside Christianity who teach heresy and raw doctrine. 
Then the second set of signs was in the political realm. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he kept his focus on the question they asked, end is not yet. So he's describing an end time scenario where wars and nations get into, don't become better, they are getting worse. Did you, did you understand that? You will hear of wars, rumors of uh, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, some will point out to you that word nation in Greek is ethnos against ethnos. So even in a national boundary, people groups who have lived in harmony begin to war with each other. This has a parallel. Now you can see family being disrupted. I'll come to this later. That is, marriage is redefined. Uh, children leave home early. Children rebel against parents. So just the way the single human family is, a family is disrupted. The larger human family is also disrupted. That is, nations can't live in peace with nations. Not only kingdom against kingdom, even within a given state, ethnic groups have fought each other, or killed each other, virtually in in many, many nations, if there were two ethnic groups, they have fought with each other. Uh, because uh, God's grace keeps family together, even for unbelievers. Because that comes straight from the Garden of Eden. From, from the beginning of creation, God blessed man and woman to be fruitful and multiply. So whether they, whether they personally accept Christ or not, there's a blessing one when two people come together to live forever for marriage. God blesses that. That's even before the cross, that is granted by His grace of creation. Similarly, nations were created to live together and He gave resources to the nations. So, uh, nations also had this grace to be cohesive, work together, earn together. So when grace is departing, or grace is in short supply. Putting it differently, when people keep resisting the grace of God so badly, you will see the symptom in two places. I'll repeat it. When people violate the grace of God so badly, you will see the symptom in two places. One, in the single, in the family unit. Two, in the family of nations. If you understood that, give away. Understood that, doesn't it? Looks like we need more chairs at least. So this is why the two look distant. I mean, a single family unit, father and mother, brother and sister doing well together, looks a simple small thing. But in the eyes of God, it's not a simple small thing. It's the thing for which God created heaven and earth. It's God's first governmental unit and all of earth's resources are given that a family would do well. Father, mother, brother, sister or siblings would do well. Did you understand that? So when human beings are resisting the grace of God, denying God, defying God in increasing measure, symptom shows up in the family unit being disrupted and the national family units being disrupted. That's what you are seeing all over the world. Correct? Isn't it? That's what we are seeing all over the world. So now let's, that's political science. Uh, I'm at Matthew 24. Then science in ecology and commerce for means pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of birth pangs. Next one, please. Can we have the next slide? Also, when birth pangs begin, I asked this question last time. How many of you like birth pangs? Birth trouble. 
the right answer is after 40 weeks, birth pain should come after 40 weeks. But you don't want to keep the child for 45 weeks, 50 weeks. So when birth pains are coming, they are saying, an only solution for earth is that a new earth be born by a miraculous God process. Why are birth pains necessary? For a new birth. What is this new birth? A new earth to be born of a God process. If we have time today, we can go through all the processes that seem to be winding down. Now, there was an earlier gentleman called Peggy who said, God has wound up uh, creation as a clock and it is now winding down. So one day, all usable energy will be gone and energy will be chaotic, entropy will increase and, and, and Earth has to wind down even according to thermodynamics. Now for us who don't know thermodynamics, you don't have to worry about it. All, it's, all, all that's happening is the ocean and potable water, vegetation, the corals, everything is actually winding down. Uh, Psalm 104 said, creation will wax old like a garment, become old like a garment. That's what's happening. So these birth pangs are for God's new order to come through and Romans 8 says even we the sons of God are groaning together seeing these things are happening they are going to have some effect but we are not without hope for us it's birth pangs of a new time to come Romans 8 says verse 19 for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God but the creation are subjected to futility the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. But we know that the whole creation grows and labors with birth pangs together until now. Scriptures tell us, because scriptures are the wisdom of God, they tell us, I read Romans 8.22, uh, that in creation, creation is also going through a pang which will give birth to a new created order but that is uniquely God, man can't do it and all the physical science in the globe is saying there are many issues that are arising geophysically which man can't handle. Now obviously secular humanists will not like this. They will say earth is what ever, isn't it? So anyone, anyone being told, those who don't believe in a beginning and creation, they will say that earth is eternal, matter is eternal, time is also eternal. We say God is eternal, time came from God, space came from God, earth came from God. So it's a matter of two ideologies. For us, something had to be eternal. We say God is eternal. They say matter is eternal. So it's two belief systems when it comes to origins. Neither is more scientific than the other. It's a two belief system, isn't it? We believe God is eternal. And all the signs are showing that Earth is getting old. Uh, so, a little further on. Next slide. Yes, we'll get back to the slide presentation. Thank you, Loshi, for being so quick. All this at the beginnings of Earth Banks. Now when birth pangs happen, Jesus immediately focuses on his people. Will you say it me? His people. Verse 10 says, verse 9 says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So when verse 9 says you will be hated in all nations for my name's sake, it has a more global a picture than what the church had in 70 AD. This is important for you to grasp. In 70 AD, when Jerusalem fell, and Jews lost Jerusalem, and they were driven to all the different parts of the Roman Empire as slaves, gospel had not gone to all nations. If you understood that, give away. way. Because there were, I mean, there were Indians in you, America, there were, Aztec and Maya and Inca in South America and we were here in Sri Lanka, you know. So, 
gospel had not come to all nations. Therefore, this Matthew 24, 9, you will be persecuted in all nations, didn't happen before 70 AD. If you agree, just give away. It will happen at the end of time. There's a reason why I'm, uh, why I'm laboring on the point. It, so this uh, verse 9 is also about the large picture. I told you at the beginning, there are three questions. When will the temple be dismantled? What will be the signs of your coming? What will be the signs of the end? He began to give a broad scope of the big picture quickly and got back to their first question, when will the temple be dismantled? So he's still looking at the big picture of Christians being persecuted in all nations. All these are the beginnings of sorrows, uh, so in all nations. Verse 10, and then many, now he's concentrating on Christians and the church, because that's the apple of God's eye. Jesus first speaks to the church, and whenever things are happening on earth, God is keeping his eye on the church, isn't it? That's, that's God's darling, that's how Jesus died. So what happens to the church is God's first interest in a nation. Now today if we can look at it, uh, there's a way of knowing how will a nation go? You can give marks. Does, does this nation hate Israel? Then you get minus 10. Does this nation teach the, teach the, uh, treat the church well? You get plus 10. Three, does this nation mm, mm, uh, you know, care for its own? So like that you can give marks to a nation and see, is this nation full of uncontested sorcery? Is this nation having uh, abortions more than live births? You get the point. Nations begin to go down in life index. You have a life expectancy that people calculate for insurance or even in a nation. Similarly, God has a life expectancy calculation about nations. He's also keeping tab of every nation because for him this is a big family and God is omniscient and omnipotent and he can keep tab of every nation how they are doing in their in his index and we also can understand in the mind of God what is God's ex life expectation for Sri Lanka. It's possible but that we might get on to later in the day. At present we are seeing how Jesus gives a quick snapshot view about the church. Maybe a snapchat to you. Matthew 24, 10 to 30. Many will be many will be offended and will betray one another, will hate one another. Where? Where? They in the church. Many false prophets will rise and deceive many. Where? In the church. Where do false prophets rise? In the church. Where do false Christ rise? In the world, in other religions. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will become cold. Where? In the church. So three times this many is given. Not that we should get scared, but how do we prepare for days like this? Be sure that every bit of offense that comes into our heart, unforgiveness, bitterness, grief, malice, <laughs> you know that, <laughs> sooner we deal with it, safer we are. The time is coming, the warfare behind simple daily events is so severe. It's not worth harboring offense for even five minutes, you know. Don't let it arise. As you feel this offense coming, deal with it. Bring it under the blood. Don't keep it. It may be husband and wife, it may be child and parent and child, whatever relationship, you deal with it. Second thing, watch out for deception. Third thing, iniquities that sap your love for God and love for, this is agape, love for wife, so the, 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 the sinful things that come up. So you have to watch these three things, offense, deception, and iniquity. Now the strange thing is, all Christians are not vulnerable to all three. You must know your personality type. Are you the kind who, who is more vulnerable to offense? Some, some like that. 
they can be quite holy about other things. They, they, their eyes don't stray sexually, they are very pure. That's why they can be very offended about something, isn't it? Then there could be a second kind of Christian, no wind or wave of doctrine can shake them at all. They are very sound on doctrine, very bad on offense. You get the point. So, of the three, I must know what time I am vulnerable to. Then we can be safer. The last one is few. Can you see that? He who endures to the end, same shall be uh, he who. That's in the uh, that's in the singular. He who endures to the end, same shall be saved. So again, the word end comes up, which means he still has the end in view. Okay, but he who endures to the end, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So. There he gives a snapshot view of the large picture and gets on to the immediate thing. Okay? So this doesn't need any expository genius. You are a simple Bible student, simple believer. You are reading through Matthew and you find he has given a snapshot view of the big picture and will come. Then he gets into specifics. Okay? So what's the first specific he begins with? Verse 15, therefore when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place whoever reads let him understand then let those who are in Judea flee but to the mountains so it's specific to Judea it's to nobody else see it's about disciples who will be immediately present when these things are going to happen and this thing about Daniel and abomination of desolation only Jews will know at the time Jesus is speaking Okay, so this was a limited event that happened and by, uh, by uh, AD 70, Romans uh, surrounded Jerusalem, desecrated the temple in different ways, uh, there are statues are brought inside and they uh, on purpose denigrated. So for the Jews, unbelievers coming, Gentiles coming with their statues to the most, uh, most holy place was a terrible abomination. And this had a history in 176 BC, when a chap called Antiochus Epiphanes, one of the one of the, the Greek Empire divided into four after the death of Alexander, and one general invaded uh, one, one, one group of Greek armies invaded Jerusalem, and he he faced a sow. This is pink on the Jerusalem's altar, just for just for desecration. Uh, just to, uh, uh, be, be, they did it not merely for religious indignity to break the power of the God of the Jews. Get the point? They felt these Jews are impossible people because they have power with their God. So uh, they must offer an unclean sacrifice to get God's power out of Jerusalem. That's why Antiochus Epiphanes did it. So this abomination of desolation which Daniel prophesied in Daniel 9.27 happened again in 70.80 okay so we are now we are looking at the immediate picture they will be taken as uh, captives and slaves to all the nations of the world all the nations all, all, all over the Roman Empire so it's all about the immediate flee Verse 20, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on Sabbath, so which is relevant only to Jews. Agreed. This persecution is only relevant to Jewish believers. Agreed. Okay. For then there will be great then. Then, again it now after that description, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on Sabbath. Verse 20 ends Jesus' response to what will happen to the temple. If you understood that, give away. Then he begins, For there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no one ever, uh, until this time, no, nor ever shall be. Again he goes back to the end time picture of the terrible tribulation that is coming on all the world. Whereas the last five verses were about the bad time 
that Jews will have between 33 AD and 70 AD. When Jesus said, the, my blood will be on this generation that crucified. And they said, that's okay. And Pilate said, this blood is not on my head. <coughs> we, we need some chairs. Uh, Pilate said, this blood should not be uh, on my hand. They said, it's okay, let the blood be on our hands. So that was that generation that got dispersed all through the Roman Empire as slaves. And they lost Jerusalem. And they lost Jerusalem till when? We did this last study. They lost Jerusalem till when? Till the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. That was the prophecy. We will see this person. So when did Jews get back Jerusalem? They got their state back in 1948, got Jerusalem back in 1967. So Jews got back Jerusalem in 1967. Okay? Right. Now we are looking at this great and terrible tribulation that is coming, the kind of which has never been, never shall be thereafter. We it's the last great terrible time the earth will know. Verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning. 22. And unless those days were shortened, all flesh, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So what do we understand by that? When these terrible troubles begin, elect will still be there. So how will the Lord shorten the days for the elect? What do you like to recommend to Jesus? Now things are Things are, I mean in Sri Lanka things are not so bad. In Syria it's terrible. In China it was terrible at one time, now it is improving. In North Korea it's terrible for Christians, isn't it? But there was a time when uh, there was all over the world, quite more than 50% of the church believed, we will be taken up without any trouble. That, that didn't happen. Because in China people died in prison. In, in Russia, people died in prison. In North Korea, people are Christians are dying. So that going up without any trouble didn't happen. Correct? So there's some trouble. But Jesus promises, Matthew 24, 22, unless those days were shorter, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shorter. Are you glad? So you want to be flesh or elect? You want to be flesh or elect? You want to be Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? So this study is to give you a resounding conviction that time is up, that this something has accelerated in the air. It could have happened in the time of our great-grandfather. It didn't happen in the time of our great-grandfather. It has happened in our time. And I can give you 21 factors that are hurtling to a disastrous end. And before that, elect have to be taken. So this the kind of days that are intolerable have begun for Syrian Christians, for great Iraqi Christians. Maybe not so bad, but in Pakistan, many areas, Christians live in terrible fear, isn't it? Iranian Christians. Okay? And for Christian bakers in Obama's America, it's only bakers. But it's getting to Roman Catholic University. It's getting to Roman Catholic hospitals that don't offer abortion. Now follow me closely. We like to think 
Earth is nice, humans are nice, times are not so bad, it will improve, because we want this. Now, I must say we had this. Hitler came and went, didn't it? We had this. Even now, now when in UK, the cinema chains refused to have a one minute video clip, which Archbishop of Canterbury prepares. Now, this is not some five star Pentecostal channel. This is the Archbishop of Canterbury. You know the story? He prepares a one minute video clip for the Lord's Prayer, for he is a godly man. And every cinema chain in UK refuses to air it on an advertisement basis. This is not summa, you know, it, it, it's to pay and publish it, isn't it? We can do it in Sri Lanka. <coughs> if there's someone wealthy enough, we can do it in Sri Lanka. So, David Cameron has said this is against free speech, which is true. Anyone should be able to advertise. This is they advertise such horrible, <laughs> sensual, immoral things. So, uh, so this, this anti-Christian thing that is developing in nations, but it speaks well for England, isn't it? England's most of official church takes a stand and wants to publish, and England's Prime Minister supports it. So another, you can give five or ten marks when the head of state is not anti-Christian. You can get a, not give another five or ten marks when the head of state is pro-Christian. You get how nations get life expectancy, gradation and calculation from God the Father. Every nation is accountable to him because he created nations in his image. Ephesians 3.10 says every family on earth he named personally and they are accountable to him. That's how he watches nations. Uh, so for his, for his elect's sake, he will shorten these days. For elect, the days are short. For flesh, for flesh, very difficult days. Now this is the time for us to pray for our loved ones. If you have a father and mother, still flesh and not elect, not receive Christ into their heart, you must pray now. It will take two minutes for prayer. Brother or sister, not in Christ, we must pray. So these are days when we read these scriptures, fear of God comes to us. And we are moved that we must not be haphazard about witnessing to those whom we can visit. These are days like that. So if we don't take the warnings of Christ, we will not witness in an urgent way. Because it's easy. This is not an easy time. All the signs of the times are saying something has accelerated in the nation. When billions of people are losing statehood, and 400,000 Syrian children are in uh, refugee camps in Syria. Syrian universities are empty. And Syrian refugee, among Syrian refugees are professors, medical doctors, well-to-do people who have gone seeking refuge in other countries. So about four or five nations in the Middle East are destructive. So let's pray anyway that we will get into our heart. Lord, I don't want one person whom I can touch, to whom I have access, for them to remain flesh. I want them to turn to be elected, choosing Christ. Flesh or elect. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Follow your Christ. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Lord, we are asking. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Holy Spirit, we are asking. Turn to Christ. Lord, those of our loved ones, our blood relatives who don't know you, turn to Christ. Because there's a great retreat, Lord, for the elect. These days will be shortened for the elect. For the elect. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With any temptation, tribulation that comes our way, <coughs> you will also 
not allow us to be tested beyond our endurance, that's the promise. You will provide a way of escape. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we remember Luke 21, 36, which says, when these things happen, watch and pray that you be worthy to escape what's going to come upon the world. So there is an escape option given to God's people. We want to seek your kingdom and your righteousness first, he says. Make sure that our priorities are your priorities, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, continuing, just, just reading through Matthew chapter 24, okay? I'm not doing anything unusual. Matthew 24, 23, he takes up the description he began at the beginning. Then if anyone says to you, look, there is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. So we can see that he is continuing that first theme of end times. Understood that? Where he's prefacing it, just the way he gave that short introduction to end time. Now he's again using the same language to let us know he's getting back to end times, having described what will happen to Jerusalem in, 1970, in 70 AD. Uh, false Christ, false prophets, 24, uh, show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Now, this says that there will be false miracles in the church, outside the church. Now, I don't know whether there are many false miracles outside the church happening. But how do you think? Sai Baba was one, isn't it? Luz, Fatima. Uh, I don't know whether there are any, any well-known places where great miracles are happening. I don't know. There might be places that great miracles by evil power. Then there will be great miracles by false prophets inside the church. See, I have told you before, I have told you before, if they say to you, look, he's there, as the lightning comes, then this will... Now, now in the end time, this, uh, how shall I call it? So, this all, this went, and then came this time when God says, elect, must be saved. For them, the, the, a short time. Which means after that short time, what will happen to them? Their flesh will remain, elect will go up. Who are the elect? Who are born of the Spirit? Whose flesh? Not born of the Spirit. Christ is not in them. Very easy definition and a biblical definition, correct? Okay? Yeah. So we want anyone that we know, whom we can touch, we don't want to remain, them to remain flesh, we want them to receive Christ and be elected into the family of God. So this description so far is this shortened period. Will you say in a shortened period? Till elect get a chance, to get their near dear flesh to come to Christ, that's the only reason at present the terrible things are still at bay. Under, if you understood that, you will be. Syria is terrible. Iraq is terrible. It could have been any nation anywhere. But there is some period of God given grace till elect do all they can, all they should to get anyone to promise believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved at thy household. This is that period. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for easy. This is in having begun. The Lord has just told it. You know, that the same ecological phenomena the great crash, the dead crash, the, 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 the ideas and the conspiracies of global planners to crash the uh, crash currency, all that is on. You remember 2007 and 2008? Dead crash came, grain scarcity came, and something again to fall. Oceans are dying, 
and ice is melting and which is all true what for a long time what happened was icebergs didn't melt. So they kept saying where is this ocean warming, where is this ocean rising, icebergs are till the same size. What most science did not know was this thin ice which is in the polar regions, that is the reason for this or this what you call those amazing lights that those in the polar regions you get this phenomenal what you call it northern lights that is that is because of the thin ice sheets which keep reflecting sunlight and the heat doesn't get into the ocean currents that keep the globe well modulated and regulated heat now thin sheets of ice have largely melted away Though the big blocks of ice are still there, now only they realize, in God's amazing wisdom, He had created these thin sheets of ice. When they melt away, all the of the heat in the polar regions get inside the oceans, and ocean currents are disturbed. So you have brother El Nino and sister La Anna, who is much worse than the brother, giving this unpredictable storms. It's already happened. So this year may be a year that uh, that these storms are coming and it has been increasing every year. Now they have figured it out, how it happened, what had happened, why so many good scientists didn't believe in ocean warming. Actually what is the phenomenon, they have now figured it out. So all I'm saying is this, in this shortened period, let's make the most we can because next we go to the next period that's coming and then again Jesus says in 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days very difficult as it was it's going to get worse immediately after the tribulation of those days sun will be darkened moon will not give the light uh, the powers of heavens will be shaken, sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Okay? So that is completely apocalyptic, isn't it? At that time, you know scientists, nobody can say what else will happen. Up to now, we have reasonably studied and looked at the signs, uh, political and whatnot, for means and pestilence and earthquakes, up to this time. After this, what earth will be like, we don't know. Can we get back to the slides? Children will rise against parents and have them put to death. 
Now, this is a scatological and apocalyptic phenomenon that is in, in ISIS territory, children are made the executioners. In communist countries, formerly, when you have to get the communist tie in Russia, when you are passing 14, uh, children ratted on their parents, whether they were following Christianity and so on, and when children uh, witnessed against the parents, those children are made uh, youth leaders of the communist movement. That happened in some mission. Now we find children taking firearms and killing weapons. In ISIS territory, children are made the executioners. Child soldiers, Prabhupada did it, uh, world over, Children are being used for war, and children kill. So, I mean, always adults kill, but Jesus is saying a time is coming when children will use murderous weapons. Okay? Uh, that is about offense and so on. Uh, second thing is about false prophecies and deception. Uh, I, when I am looking at this, you know, People are saying, all will be saved after death. That the cross is for everybody, which is universalism. Uh, that God is a good God, you can do whatever you, whatever you do, you are saved. Because Christ died for you. Now, this is not the gospel that was, this is another gospel. Uh, did we get this book? Did you get 50 copies of this book? Now I'm trying to see whether during this study we can get used to looking at this book. I have a chapter on this book called Another Gospel. I wrote this some years ago. Page 43. If you can give at least uh, one for three people. The gospel according to me and my opinion. This usually a mix of truth and fables. Desiring to save whom I love with my wisdom. The gospel without the severity of love. You know, uh, Romans 11, 22 says, uh, because of the severity of God and the kindness of God, they work together that we may be saved. Now this is nothing, nothing to be scared of. When your child does something wrong, severity means you don't tolerate him behaving like a holy man, isn't it? You may not take a rod and eat him, but you will say, son, that's not the way to behave. Isn't it? The severe side of God, your severe side, protects your son from getting into increasing trouble. If you don't stop him in the small things, what will he next do? This is happening, isn't it? When parents are not not stopping children doing, you know, doing small bad things, they increasingly do terrible bad things. Uh, third, gospel of perish, uh, gospel of my great gift, gospel of my great need, gospel of my goodness. So I have listed about 14 kinds of things which is not the gospel. In our time, we have heard of cheap grace, that you don't have to repent. Uh, God has forgiven you once, and once saved, you are saved. And Paul clearly says, uh, having preached to all, I buff my body, lest I be a castaway. Uh, then there's another thing. I find many people have gone to believing churches, where the gospel is preached, and experienced a miracle. Because on Friday evening, I meet parents who have gone to churches, experienced miracles, but they don't know Christ. They have never come to the cross. They have never made a decision to receive the Savior. Uh, recently a lady came and she asked, are you also of the Hallelujah religion? She has gone to a service many times for a certain problem. So, uh, so she has got that, that these people say Hallelujah. Now, if we were not, she was not going to come. So, Giranti assured her that we are five star. Five star. I mean, she has gone many days, not one day. But she has not heard. That's not the gospel. Coming to Christ, meeting the cross. 
So uh, I think there are lots of people, many people who have begun to go to services but not really safe. So that's the deception of, you know, uh, finally of course iniquity, I mean you know any age, any age iniquities that come through the eye are so, so enticing. So that love begins to grow cold is so true, isn't it? Uh, so I think that's what it is, Srila, that these three things are Christ. I mean, when you read Christ, many times I put up my hand in my study room, prayer room and say, Lord, you are amazing. Your wisdom is amazing. Thank you for saving me from my academics and putting me to reading the scripture. In three verses, he had described for us what exactly we should watch for. That we, this would be enduring and this would ensure that we meet with him. We are his elect. We don't revert to be flesh, isn't it? So these are the three things in our flesh we should watch for. Offense. The deception is the nice side of it, you know. Uh, pampering and the nice gospel, it is so good, you know, God is so loved. Uh, the last one, of course, the iniquity. Okay. Uh, now I want to get on to this last generation. Prabhupada has also got into it. That's a generation that curses their father, does not bless their mother. Now, Prabhupada is, a, is one of the books in the Old Testament. But in its 30th chapter, Prabhupada is describing a generation. And the Hebrew word is a period of time when this is happening. I have put the Hebrew there. This, there is a generation means a period of time. This is going to happen as, uh, posteriorly at a certain time is going to become like this. Like what? Cursing their father, not cursing their mother. Which means their anger is more against the father. Did you understand? Their anger is more father fracture than a mother fracture. If you understood that, we are Then, that are pure in their own eyes, yet it is not washed from their own field. That is, there is nothing filthy for them. You know, in generations past, people knew this is filthy, this is not filthy. Consuming of filth, even words, you know, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, what they watch on their smartphones, nothing is filthy. I mean, they, they have no sense that this is, this is bad. They lost their sense. Now we are not happy about it. We, we are heartbroken and our generation and maybe particularly Krishantans and Shiloma's generation, that, that generation which is close to them is the generation that really has to pray through and seek that. We look old and our language would be, you know, our language would be so archaic and so dictatorial and we'll be so vehement and uh, we will look like Nebuchadnezzar to them. Uh, so those days a generational gap was between 50 and 20. Initially 40, it became 30. Now the 40 year olds can't reach the 20 year olds. Now the 30 year olds can't reach the 15 year olds. 15 year olds and 30 year olds are archaic fellows, old fellows, don't know, snapshot, snapchat, snapchat, they don't know. I did not know till day before when my daughter informed me that something like that. Uh, so 15 year olds have to be reached by 20 year olds. Because this generational change has become so rapid. What does it do? It fractures the family. That's what it does. So the 15 year old brother doesn't relate to the 25 year old brother. Alienation is so great. He has his own friends, own digital games, own things and own party. He does not want anyone in his family to come to that. So it's, it's a phenomenon of our time. But we trust Christ to keep our families, isn't it? Isn't it mine? Jesus is in our heart and we are one family, isn't it? Yes. So we have grandmothers, we have father mothers, we have uncles, we have brothers and sisters. So when Christ is in our heart, we don't have these divisions. The family is disrupted in so many ways, you know, and it is used for you. Uh, this generation, lofty are their eyes, their eyelids are lifted up. That is, they are always, they want more than what they have. 
uh, they are always looking for the next thing in a thrill, in a gadget, in knowledge, in money, you know. Next thing, next thing, next thing. So it's, it's a set. So we get understanding how we have to look after our children. In, it, it's in there. It, it can just get into their spirit. And every time now they come from school, you have to do a wash daily. Their thoughts have to be washed. Because soon after they come from school, there's a certain momentum which are not there in the morning. So you can't wait till next day. They say parents have to take time to, you know, see the child enough for a day. You can't wait till the next day. You can't wait till the fantastic holiday you're going to have so that you can give time for your children, once in four months. You can't do that. Every day there has to be a relationship. Then there's a generation of teeth are like so that, so that their words are very sharp, like knives, like stabbing. They use words, they don't even know the weight of those words. They, they just use it because they heard it in a cartoon or from a peer. You are mad or you are dear, or, you know. They just use those words. They heard it in a cartoon or from a peer. Why I'm going on about this is, it's good to believe scriptures totally and literally, isn't it? Christ has wisdom, word of God has wisdom, he has seen all this coming. So when these times are on us, we better be the elect of God. We better be his salt and his light. So in a nation, when God is looking at life expectancy, he looks at the salt. He looks at the salt, the light. Can the salt, which is God's people in that nation, and the light, which is God's people in that nation, can they dispel the darkness? Can they prevent the corruption? That's how a nation is protected. Last week I came to the conclusion that we have to pray over corruption in our nation. Just the day we prayed for the war. During war time, there were spirits of suicide, murder, hatred. There were spirits, there were demon spirits. Just the way Revelation 9 says a certain principality, the door is open, the bottom of the spirit opened and came up on Sri Lanka. Now we fought that. Every morning at 5 o'clock, 2008, 2009, I was in church. Every morning at 5 o'clock. And many of you took one day and came. Every Saturday at 3.30, we were here. Going on praying. You remember, Raj? Now, since the change of government on the 8th of August, 8th of January, I'm watching, hoping, watching, hoping. Corruption level is still the same. It has to change. So last week I said, corruption has got institutionalized and demonized. Every chair that sits with financial decision, we corrupt. Now that is a spiritual phenomenon. So like the way we prayed for bloodshed, we have to pray for this bleeding of the nation. And the bribes that are offered are not few things. One particular minister, Secretary Vino, that is Vino, who, he was offered in the first week 10 million to get this through. Then another 5 million to get another thing through. So he has said, this blood money will come on my children. I never did this, I can't do this. But that's the kind of liver, and that's the kind of people who are there, and that's the kind of ministers who are there. So we have to pray through where we are salt. We are light and we can. Shall we say together, we are salt? Yes. Jesus is in us. We are light. Jesus is in us. We can pray through. Because if we put the problem outside us, we will have no hope. We just criticize and make it worse. Because we are salt, we are light, we are the solution. Solution can't be critical. Preach your neighbor as a solution can't be critical. Some people see problems, some people see solutions. What do you see? Some people see solutions to problems, other people see problems in the solution. What, how are you? So this is the time we take strength and Christ in us. Next slide. Yeah, that is enough. I think we have done this before. 
I want to get to the book of Revelation. Now we have finished exactly one. Let's fan our brain with some oxygen. Jan, do you think you can get me a glass of water? Glass of water. And I want to, if possible in one hour, help you to look at the book of Revelation and to be able to know it. So when we sing, we begin with Dore me, when we write, we begin with ABC. So we go to the beginning of the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I will ask you the question in, through the book of Revelation. Is this literal or allegorical? You understand? Is this actual or is it picture language? Second thing I'll ask you, where do you get this in the Old Testament? Because the new has to be interpreted in the light of the old. Third thing that I'll ask you, is this happening in heaven or earth? Fourth thing I'll ask you, is has this happened and finished? Or is it going to happen in the future? If you understood that, we will wait, but I'll put it down to the book. Four questions to ask regarding the when you are reading through the book of Revelation. Literal law. Have you heard the word allegory before? It's the second cousin of alligator. Literal law, allegorical. Allegorical is a picture form. When, when Jesus said, uh, when Jesus said, when the carcass is ready, vultures will be circling. Matthew 24. That means when a nation is bleeding and dying, vultures come to take from it. So vultures are, are powers, people. Who, 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 a dying nation, they take out of it. So that's an allegory. Every parable is allegory, isn't it? So are we to sow. Seed is the word. So is the Lord. Stony hearts. So those are allegories. It's a story giving, uh, from which a meaning has to be derived. Literal allegorical. What did I next say? Is this happening in heaven or earth? Is this present or past or future? What's the next one I said? I said another one. Heaven or earth? Okay. So let's look at chapter 1. No? In the Old Testament. Where is this in the Old Testament? What's the light we get from the Old Testament? Into the passage that Revelation is described. Then everybody can understand the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants. Which means this book will be understood by those who are born again and engage in the kingdom of God and serving. Actual Greek is Jewelos, his slaves. So this is not a book for entertainment or goosebumps. As you serve and work in the kingdom of God, you begin to understand the book of Revelation. So that majority of the church is not understanding the book of Revelation. Revelation shows that majority of the church is not serving the kingdom, they are serving their own pursuits. This book becomes understandable as you engage the kingdom of God in serving Him, isn't it? Things which must shortly take place, actual Greek, Greek is things that will quickly come to pass. When, it, when the book of Revelation describes certain time periods and that event will quickly gather just the way Revelation chapter 6 has Horses that are galloping. Shortly come to pass, meaning, John, the meaning is it will quickly happen and finish once it begins. 
He sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, the last surviving apostle in the island of Patmos, who bore, bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So Jesus begins it with a eschatological favor, flavor, time is near. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, that's what he was when he was on earth. The firstborn from the dead since his resurrection, ruler over the kings of the earth, and that's what he is going to be when he comes to second time. So there's a short biography of Jesus Christ. He was faithful witness on earth. He is now the resurrected one, the forerunner of another of his brethren who will also be resurrected, and he is the coming king. Did you understand the biography of Jesus Christ? So God has given a short biography of Jesus Christ. Uh, now I want to get to chapter 2 and 3. Jesus describes his church. Revelation 1.19 Write the things which you have seen. So John saw Jesus in the island of Patmos. Tell your neighbor what did John see? What did John see? Jesus, John saw Jesus in the island of Patmos, the glorified vision. When did John see Jesus last? At the cross, man cross, terrible, heartbreaking. Of course, he saw him after the resurrection. But now John sees Jesus in great glory. Great glory. So you would have hearken and come to know. He is Christ, He is King, and what He is showing and what He is saying, the church can carry on forever and ever till He comes. Amen. That's the purpose of this mission. This is a mission handbook for all times, particularly for troubled times. That's what the book of Revelation is. To be lived out in difficult times. Uh, so, write these things you have seen, the things which are. So what are the things that are the churches that were during there in John's time? And the church that was there in John's time, is it there in our time? Yes, to this day the church is on earth. Therefore, as long as God's vineyard is doing well in a nation, that nation will do well. It was the most powerful nation in the world. North Korea they eat grass and you know what not, the populace. The point I am making is, you take care of your wife. You work with Jesus to take care of his vineyard. That nation will look after itself when God's vineyard is saved. This is our mission. When we do our best for God's church, that nation will prosper. Okay, that's how it is. In every time in Sri Lanka, when, when the government was favorable to the church and the church did well, Sri Lanka prospered. That's how Sri Lanka prospered from 1917 to 1948. Church did well. And from 1956, nation went down, church went down, and we are just catching That's the story of brief history of Sri Lanka. Every nation will have this history. Church. Finally, the thing that will take place after this. So chapters 2 and 3 are the church. Then after chapter 3, you are going to see what will happen when the church period is over. If you understood that, give a break. Of the churches, I like to take two for contrast. Uh, church number 2, the persecuted church. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. The messenger of the church in Smyrna write, 
This thing says the first and the last who was dead and came in to came to life. So Jesus is speaking to the messenger of the church. Maybe the apostle of the church. The Greek is Angelos, which translates for heavenly angel as well as earthly messenger. How does Jesus introduce himself as the first and the last who was dead and has come to life? Why would Jesus introduce himself like that? Because this church is facing death all the time. To give them confidence, don't fear death. You will see that presently. I know your works, tribulation and poverty. But you are very rich. And I know the blasphemy of the they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. So this is a persecuted church. Smyrna means in Greek it means crushed. Smyrna means crushed. Do not fear of any of these things which you are about to suffer. Indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. You will have tribulation ten days. So through the reign of ten empires in the Roman Empire, church suffered. Till constant time brought freedom and brought corruption. He brought both. So this is a picture of the church that suffered then. And it will be a picture of the church that suffers now. So where do you think this, this Smyrna kind of church can be found? Now in the world. China, Syria, Iraq, Iran. So this is a message for the church of all the ages. But Jesus saw with his eyes of fire all was going to happen in the church. So if our business is Jesus' business, we are very safe. Because Jesus has seen it all. Uh, let's read a little more. Do not fear any of these things. They land you in prison. Tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death. I will give you the crown of life. So that's that church. Now let's take a contrast. Last church mentioned. Revelation 3, 14. This thing says, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now when Jesus speaks to this church like that, I get the feel. Why is he saying beginning of the creation of God? Is something going to end? That's what I think. Why is he, why is he introducing himself like that? This church, are you following me? The appellation is different. Introduction is different. Now, you know, when you go to different places, you may introduce yourself a little differently, isn't it? Jesus is also like that. Then he is the Amen. What does Amen mean? I am true to myself. So when we end up prayer saying Amen, what you are saying is, let this be true. Because we pray it in Jesus' name. The faithful and true witness is emphasizing these things. To the church that was suffering, he enter, em, emphasized his life and his power over death. Isn't it? To this church, he is emphasizing truth, truth, and truth. What might be the problem of this church or the need of this church? You get the point, isn't it? Because first church, they were facing death. He introduced death for Christ's sake. So he introduced himself as one who has power over death. And as we begin reading his introduction to this church, he is saying, I am truth. Faithful witness means truth. Again, beginning and the end is truth. So I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Neither cold nor hot. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, have need of nothing, 
do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So that's a terrible description. I counsel you to buy from me gold, which means remedy is available. Because about one church, Jesus said, I gave her time to repent, she repented now. She didn't say that to the he didn't say that to the student. Later he will say repent. To first church Ephesus, he said repent. To the fourth church Theatira, he doesn't say repent. He says, I gave her time to repent, she repented now. So already there's a large mass of church to which Jesus has said, I gave her time to repent, she repented now. Understood or not? Theater is also a church. You can go home and read it because I want to do a synopsis of the whole book so that you will you will know I also can understand revolution. But this church he said, I counsel. When Jesus counsels, he expects a result, isn't it? He expects a turnaround. This church can turn around. Only thing, we must tell this church what Jesus says. If we monopolize this church and don't tell the truth, we are doing them a disservice. Telling truth has a cost. Telling truth has a cost, isn't it? Telling truth has a cost. Because you say I'm rich, what not? I counsel you to buy from me gold, refine in the fire, that you may be rich. So we have to tell them, there is a richer, there is a, there are riches that you have to get from Christ. Riches that I can see you have got is not taking you to eternity. And white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Anoint your eyes, will I serve, that you may see, because that is it. They are deceived. They can't see. Did you understand that? Now, historians and commentators say, Laodicea was famous for these three. Very rich city, they were a trading city, and they were manufacturing an eye cell for eye problems. Now, Jesus says the Laodicean Isaiah will not help you, you get it from me. They were famous for textiles and they were a very rich city. So Jesus is referring to the reality and saying you get to the supernatural thing, you get it from me. So the church has come a long way from the stage of Smyrna, isn't it? So what, did, what did Jesus say about Smyrna? Tribulation, poverty, isn't it? Prison. So which is the blessed church? Very difficult, isn't it? How are blessings defined now? Looking from outside, Laodicea is the blessed church. So that is why we need to really touch your eyes. Uh, and verse 19 again, Jesus says, As many as I love, I will be chasing. Therefore, be zealous and be sure. Call is available. But this is a church. Call is available. Say with me, call is available. Because with the theater, he says, I gave her time to repent. She repented. That's a terrible. Fearful in time, isn't it? So there is one seventh of the church. Seven churches? So one seventh of the church. To which he says, I told her to repair, she's beyond beyond redemption or beyond beyond correction. Already for her judgment has already been passed. That's that's fearful. Uh, okay, so then the church age ends because we know he's at the door. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He has come. Good news or bad news? Have you ever peeped through the peephole of your door and not open the door? We have. Because during 
early May, this poso people and you know different different people come. <laughs> then we begin. <laughs> <laughs> not inside the house. <laughs> so Jesus is knocking on the door. Behold, I stand at the door. This is the last moment. This is the last church. He's at the door. To the fifth church, he says, I am coming. To the sixth church, he's saying, I am quickly coming, which is the church of Philadelphia. Now the seventh church, he's saying, I am at the door. He has come. He has come. Okay? To take his elect. Now chapter 4 is heaven. It's very obvious. There's no doubt about it. Chapter 4 is a heavenly city. Now you could have said chapter 2 and 3 is a is a description of what goes on in on earth. Okay? Chapter 4 is about heaven. In fact, John is asked to come to heaven. Chapter 4, verse 1. They, and these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a prophet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Now, many people who believed in rapture for a long time said in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, There is the trump of God, and here is the trumpet, therefore this is the rapture. Only thing, this was based on a wrong translation of the scripture in Revelation 5, King James and New King James translates this wrong. There are heavenly beings in chapter, uh, chapter 4 and 5, 24 elders that are sitting on thrones. So many people say this 24 is 12 elders in the Old Testament saints, 12 elders in New Testament saints. That was a standard traditional interpretation mostly performed by the Sufi reference Bible. That was based on Revelation 5.10. These elders are saying, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. But in the original, and in most translations other than KJV and New King James, you don't get us. You have made kings and priests. You don't get us. I think I have you somewhere in my What is your sound? Anyway, if, if you are finding it difficult to understand, what I am trying to say is, Revelation 4 and 5, you don't see the church in heaven. There is a point at which church appears in heaven. At the point church appears in heaven, scriptures say there is no more repentance on earth. That's, that's the problem. That's why in this short period of time, we have all who we know is flesh, our loved ones. We have to pray, pray, plead with them and say, please accept Christ. The time is coming when that will not be possible. Okay? I'm skipping over 4 and 5 and going to 6 and connecting you with where did we leave Matthew? What was happening where we left Matthew? You remember? You go there, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, sun darkened, moon shall not give a light, stars shall fall from heaven, house of the heaven shall be shaken and the Son of Man will appear in His glory. That's where we stop Matthew. Do you remember? Now, in Revelation chapter 6, Jesus is picking up from where He stopped in Matthew. Now look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. I looked when He opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. How many of you are agree this seems to be Jesus picking up from Matthew 24 30? So it's a sequence. Oliver discourse is last. 
eschatological sum, last sermon about hell things, he is speaking up with John in the island of Patmos. With more details now, obviously. Correct? So, little more of Revelation chapter 6. Sun, moon, stars fell the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Now I told you in the first study we did in October that when the Bible says stars, they are sometimes the actual stars like our sun. You know, sun is a star. It's a burning block of gases, mostly hydrogen and helium. All stars. Those are the real stars. But Bible also calls any heavenly object other than sun or moon also a star. So meteors may be called stars. Asteroids may be called stars. Did you understand that? Meaning, it's not the sun, it's not the moon, it's another heavenly object that is doing, you know, whatever. Okay? So some of those are going to fall. I mean, don't get scared, but this is what it says. Now over the last two, three years, these asteroids are whistling past our ear as far as astronomical terms go. Asteroids are between Jupiter and Saturn. There's a big distance. And there's a whole lot of broken pieces of a form of planet, I don't know what, circulating in a very elliptical kind of odd orbit. So their orbit and Earth has had a few close bye-byes. Thankfully they, they, they were coming to kiss us but they didn't kiss us, praise God. Why? Why? Because we are still here. Because the church is still here. I'm not exaggerating. I'll, I'll go through the sequence. So this, this, then verse 14, the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up. That is because this blue color is the illusion. When these changes are happening, the blue color illusion goes off. Blue color illusion gives us a beautiful canopy and we can go to sleep in peace. If this blue color is not there, you will see all kinds of fireballs and what supernova is doing. That's not the biblical noah, that's the astronomical noah. The giant, you know, all kinds of things are going on there. Now, that illusion of the blue scattered light will go off. What else? Kings of the earth, uh, every mountain and island was moved out of its place because of earthquakes. In every tectonic boundary, there will be shaking. Then mountains will move, islands will skip, like in the Fukushima earthquake. Kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks, in the mountain, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits up, no repentance. They are always saying, speaking to the mountains and saying, I guess. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who is able to stand? So this is a completely different ballgame. Agree? This is what Matthew is describing in Matthew 24. Where are we? In Matthew chapter 7, we have safely gone to heaven. We did you a clap. We are not here. That's why people can't repent. Church is not here. Church is not. Church is not. Because just before what I read, when martyrs are crying how long, the Lord says, only a little time. You want to read it? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seat, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been five, six, nine, no? Souls of those who have been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they have. They are already dead. 
And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants, so that's the first lot of saints in heaven. White robe is given. It is just give away. White robe is given. First batch of saints in heaven. Correct? White robe is given. But they are told, rest a little while. More are coming soon. Little while. Only little while. Okay? Both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as, as they were was completed. So there's going to come a time, a quick killing of Christians will happen. Then we know in this very near. Is a quick killing of Christians happening now? Get the point? So we may be just living between just two scenes. We may be living between the fifth and the sixth. So it is certainly time to see that flesh becomes light. Correct? So this is not, I haven't interpreted off the cuff. Very easy to see. Matthew 24. Verse 30 ends up, you know, Jesus picks it up exactly like that in Revelation 6, 30, isn't it? Same language almost, little more description. And we find they can't depend. Because 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 says, He who restrains will restrain till he is taken away. So what is restraining? Getting people to be penitent. Don't. And who is restraining? The Holy Spirit is speaking to our relatives. We are interceding. Holy Spirit is working, containing sin, uh, doing his utmost so that all may be saved and should perish. That's the desire of the Holy Spirit. But when he's taken away, that's what 2 Thessalonians 2 6 says when he's taken out of the way, man of sin will be fully revealed. Do you want to be there at that time? No, we don't want to be there at that time. What is that? How do we know that time period? Fifth seal has been opened. And a lot of killings are going to happen. Personally, I don't want any more killing of Christians, you know. They're terrible. Now just four days ago, some big city in Iraq, Marakosha, Korakosha, was taken by ISIS. Killing a whole lot of Christians. Isn't it? So, my suggestion is we might be between the fifth and the sixth seal. Are there any other indicators? Did some other seal work out in our lifetime that was so very obvious? Let's look at the third seal at the black horse. So, we are going backwards, huh? Third seal at the black horse. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, behold, a black horse. He who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And when he gets to work, what will happen? A pot of wheat for a day's wage. Three quarts of barley for a day's wage. Denarius is a day's wage. One whole day's wage will buy you just enough grain for one person. Grain is going to be that expensive. We nearly came to that in 2008. But some reprieve happened and we won. Okay. So kind of economics that has taken over the world, no one really knows which currency will crash. And grain is going to get scarce. Yeah. 
Now I said repentance was not possible because the Holy Spirit has gone away with the church. Now where did the church go? Chapter 7 shows where the church went. If you have been waiting with bated breath, did only that first batch of people got their white robes? No. There's a large batch of people getting their white robes. Chapter 7, verse 9. Two Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 says he that respects the Holy Spirit where does the Holy Spirit live? in the church in the believers is there now here where the church has gone chapter 7 verse 9 can we have the microphone feel like will you take the microphone and read Chapter 7 verse 9 After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Crying out. And crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to the God, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So that's where the church is gone. Okay? So then what happens is after the exodus of the church. Hereafter, I'll go very quickly. Let's get to chapter 8. Uh, before chapter 8, another thing simultaneously happens after the church is gone. Certain number of Jews are sealed because such persecution will break out against them. So beginning of chapter 7 is an earthly seal. End of chapter 7 is the heavenly seal, saints in heaven. But beginning of chapter 7, sealing Israel, 12,000 from every tribe. Why? So that their lives will not be hurt. Verse 12, the number of those who were sealed, 140,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Okay. 144,000. 144, Chapter 8. Eight seal is open, inaugurates seven trumpets. So it goes like that. There were seals one to six seals. Seventh seal opens one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trumpets. Seven trumpets open the seven bowls. So effect of what happens with seven trumpets is worldwide. Effects of what happens with the bowls is on the kingdom of the beast. Before I finish, I want to explain to you Revelation chapter 13 which gives you a picture of what happens in governments and nations. Revelation 8, I only want to get your attention to, is this literal law, is this allegorical? Okay? Trumpet 1. Shall we say trumpet 1? Another angel having a golden censer came out, uh, seven seal, uh, uh, seven seal, okay. Uh, number 7, uh, verse 7, the trump, uh, trumpet 1. First angel sounded. Hail and fire followed, mingled with blood. And they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burnt and all green grass was burnt. 
little like the plagues of Egypt. Agree? Uh, hail can be natural, fire can be natural, but this mingled with blood is not natural, isn't it? So that doesn't have a natural explanation. Agree? But the effect is very literal. Third of the trees were burnt. Green grass was burnt. Everybody say water. What did first trumpet do? One third vegetation. Second trumpet. Verse 8. Something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. Third of the sea became blood. Third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Now, destruction is very physical and literal. Uh, the agent a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. Can it now, if it's some huge volcanic mountain burning, it could be like that, isn't it? So we really don't know what this agent is, but effect is very literal and physical. If you agree, just wave a hand. We don't want to contrive anything. We want to read scripture and receive a simple understanding that every ploughboy can receive. Okay, that's from Martin Luther. Third trouble. A great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Now, agent can't be, can't be natural, is it? What is this star? And how did it, how did it select the one third of the rivers? Effect is that Waters became bitter and poisonous. Those who drank it died. Aren't we happy? Where are we now? When this is happening, where are we? Where are our relatives? Sorry about it. asking this again, only to say that we must, we must work on them because time is short. Uh, so you get the point, isn't it? So we can go, every trumpet we can go like this, uh, just to see whether the agent is natural, whether the effect is natural. So sometimes you find agent does not look natural, but the effect we can understand as very terrestrial, it is very natural, then we can understand. One third of the drinking sources went bad. Okay? So I'm skipping the rest of the trumpets where we have understood the principle. And I like to take you to 13. I must uh, confess that, or oh, I have to tell you, chapter 12 is a completely heavenly scene. But I want you to get chapter 13 first. It looks quite, it is important for you to understand chapter 13, to appreciate chapter 13. That's why I want to look at chapter 13 first. And as you know, chapter divisions were uh, done, done later. I want to read the last verse of chapter 12 to get the beginning of chapter 13. Okay? And the dragon was enraged with the woman. Ask your neighbor, who is this woman? Is it Angela Merkel? <laughs> who is this woman? And, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So here I have to, uh, maybe I have to put this on you that from chapter 12 onwards, you get a second description of what we saw from another point of view. Because now again we find church is there. So this is, if we go sequentially from chapter 12, the story we have already covered is being covered again. Okay? So in verse 17 we find part of the woman is gone. And some other part of the woman is still on earth, keeping the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? 
Then I stood on the sand of the sea that I is wrong in the KJV. It is he. ESV, NSP, we have he. Uh, how many of you have NSP? No, not about the savings bank. <laughs> NASP, American Standard, yes. New American Standard. ESV, NIV, he. Then he's two. Correct? 31, he. Okay? So if you have KJV on your King James, cut I and put he. He. one. Then he stood on the sand of the sea. Uh, in that translation, it will end up to end up to another thing. If it is follow what you have in front of you, then he stood on the sand of the sea. I want to ask you, who is this he? Who is the he? Pardon? Yeah. Very good. He who was described in the verse before the dragon is standing on the sand that is on the boundary of the nation, on the seashore, in the boundary. And obviously this is a this is a nation on the seashore, isn't it? Could be three levels. And I saw a beast right and I saw a beast rising up. I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So he's rising up from the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads blasphemous names. So that's a dragon. The first beast. Will you say with me first beast? is arising from the sea. The dragon is watching and sluicing as the ten-horned beast comes to power. Are you following me? Who is the author of that phenomenon? The dragon. Author of that phenomenon is dragon. Right now in any nation, this dragon is watching especially at election time, to get the beast on the throne. So at election time, what, what does the church do? Church watches. So that the dragon will not have say in electing who church has to watch. When the church is watching with salt and light, dragon gets paralyzed. When the church did not watch with salt and light, the great protestant nation of Germany got Hitler dragon put him there. You now did you understand how a nation gets a beast? Okay. Now question is this happening now or is this something that has happened and finished? I told you the four questions. This is happening now because church is still here. Church is still here. While the church is here, dragon is enrolling the beast. Process begins while the church is here. But he can't operate as he wants to because the church is here. Did you understand that? When he is taken out of the way, the chap who wanted to sit in the temple of God as God becomes manifest. Son of perdition will become manifest. But he who restrains, restrains till he is taken in the church. So this is a blood curtain time. This is a goosebumps time, isn't it? Because the dragon has chosen the beast and is watching. He is watching the nation in which the beast can have most power right now. That's why we have to consider the life expectancy of nations. In 1938, nobody thought solidly Protestant Germany could have a 
if Stalin's Russia had Hitler, no problem. But it was Germany. Nobody. Germany was the most Protestant nation on earth. But the whole church agreed when Hitler was rising to power. He, he played the Orient card and the Germans agreed to him. And Germans had a grudge against the Jews who were very powerful in Germany. Germans agreed to that. And when Einstein saw what's coming, in 1930 he fled Germany. He saw before others saw. And he became a citizen of the US. Simultaneously he lost what little faith he had. And he became completely atheist. Anyway, that's the whole story. So now we are watching, and the Christians must be watching in their nation. Say, brethren, you will not have no way in our nation. But he's scouring the shoreline, heads of people, to get his beast in. Okay? That's another beast. This is the first beast. That's another beast. So we read what will he do. Uh, verse 2, beast which I saw was like a leopard. So Daniel's vision, you remember? Daniel had two visions, we did it last time. You can get the DVD of last time. Daniel had two visions. First one, it was a vision of an image, gold head, a uh, uh, silver chest, bronze, belly and thighs, iron legs, feet of iron and clay. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 7, there's another image, another vision. Daniel saw this was Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. This was Medo Persian Empire. This was a big part. This was Babylon. This was Medo Persian. Bronze was Greek. Iron was Rome. Feet was last empire. Emperor say last empire. And in Daniel chapter 2, God out of his mountain without hands was making a stone. Who was making the stone? God. And this stone started its momentum parallel to the kingdoms of the world. And the kingdoms of the world looked as if they are flourishing. But when it came to the time of the feet, this stone struck the entire feet of clay and the image collapsed. So we are waiting. All that is needed is feet of clay to be seen and this little stone to have enough momentum because it's little. Tell the name of stone is little. So it needs to have enough momentum to topple this monster. Say momentum wins. Zeal of the Lord wins. It's a David Goliath story. Small story. And a big Goliath. Who wins? Small story. So church is this small story. Isn't it? When you look at the church, church is small. But it's gathering God knows. It's gathering God force. Okay? Now, Jesus is using, or Jesus is showing John, the image of Daniel, how it had worked out through the centuries. Next vision of Daniel had a lion. And the kingdoms were described as beasts. Who described it as beasts? Daniel. Amazing man Daniel was. Beast. He lived in 586 BC, probably died in before Cyrus he died. Did Daniel die before Cyrus? 
I have a very good question. He was there in the first year of science. He was there in the first year of science. He died in the final quarter of the century. Babylon was lion and Medo-Persian was bear. It came from behind and gave a bear hug. That's what happened to the Babylonian name. Belshazzar was rejoicing, the finger came on the wall and wrote what? Mene, mene, take care for passing. Weight, measure, divide. Weight, measure, found wanting, divide. That very night, Belshazzar died. Because he was feasting with the golden goblets of Jerusalem's temple. He was using to celebrate his gods. God created person. You must be careful, isn't it? Some things God takes person. And that night, capital. How did they go capital? They stopped the Euphrates river flowing and entered through the dry river bed. Babylon's walls were so thick, seven chariots could go on, unassailable. But they crept in and they took the kingdom. Then came Alexander, he was like a leopard, very swift in his conquest. Then Daniel, okay? Daniel chapter 7. Then Daniel said, what is that beast? He did not know to describe it. It was a ten-horned beast. In Daniel's time. Now the ten-horned beast is coming up again in John's time. Okay. In Daniel's image, in Daniel's time, the ten-horned beast had a small, little horn who had a big mouth and very cunning eyes. Is there a world ruler who has a big mouth and cunning eyes? I don't know if you have to watch his mouth when he speaks. No, we, we, we don't know till Christ reveals we don't know. So we can't we can't guess. Because till the church is taken away, we will not know the person. But the formation is on. Dragon is watching, beast is forming. Okay? That's that period. So getting back to John, Revelation chapter 13, 2, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him power, his throne and great authority. So all the beasts of the kingdom that Daniel saw is rolled into one in this last beast. Maybe you have to I think our study is over really. Now you understand. All what has gone in the kingdoms are getting into this fellow. And we need a lot of strength. And Jesus thought his church will be strongest at this time. And Daniel was told, this is sealed till the end. Till that time comes, this can't be. Now do we understand Daniel? Today I don't have time to do Daniel 11 because we will we'll, we'll put too much into our head. But I think we have understood the progression of the book of Revelation. We have understood that we can understand. I think this is a good time to stop. Questions? Sir? Questions? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't refer to these things. Yes, we'll get you a DVD head one. Uncle Degas. Are you sorry? Last top DB. Chapter 7. There are the dead guys in chapter 7. You can walk around. Big fun. Chapter 7. Now we have got to choose who's here. There are the dead guys in there. It progresses after that. Now 144, the, the chapter 7 concentrates on God's left eye and right eye. Meaning, the two things that he is most concerned with is church in heaven and Israel preserved on earth. That's the purpose of chapter 7. When this, you remember chapter 6, when this terrible thing happened, mountains shook, islands fled, 
immediately Jesus thinks of two things. Israel, the church. Church is safe in heaven. Israel is unsafe on earth. And he makes some measures to preserve Israel. But a terrible onslaught is coming. So that is chapter 7. Yes. Now in chapter 13 we saw in the empires of the world, I, I forgot, we must get to the next beast. We, we have to hold on for five minutes. The second beast, you remember, I said that's the second beast? The religious beast. The first beast dragon from Oz is the political beast. Dragon knows that's not enough. He must promote and support a religious beast. Revelation 13, verse 11. When I, then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So he looked much more innocent. That first beast was terrible. We know politics is terrible. But the religious beast is like a lamb. Get the point? He looked like the lamb and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. Revelation 13, 12. He performs great signs. 14, 4, 13, 14. He deceived those who dwell on the earth by those signs. Uh, 15. He, he was he was granted power to give bread to the image of the beast. 16. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, on their forehead. So it's a religious speech. Who does that? So anytime near, if you see a global religious figure getting very involved in politics, we get very involved. Politics and religion always has been terrible. France, Saar and Rasputin, anytime religion and politics get together, you know there is two beasts have got together. And who put them together? Right. That's what we watch. Mark is singing amazing things comes to mind. Hmm. We'll have read it that much. I said we'll have read it that <laughs> Yeah, so but uh, speak to my people. Blessed are they who came, blessed are those who came with their wife. More blessed are they who came with their wife. Okay. Is there a reason why the beast that comes out of the sea is linked to politics and, and the beast that comes out of land on the earth yeah. is linked to religion? The sea and yeah. land have a this uh, significance. Sea of people, uh, multitudes are referred to as the sea in Jeremiah, peoples are referred to as the sea in Jeremiah, in Daniel also. So this appellation of sea is referred to as multitudes. And earth refers to the religious sphere or the religious kingdom the second beast holds. So his, he will arise from a certain constituency. Whereas the political beast will be supported by many nations as the only only solution for the world's problem. Why is that the beginning of revelation that the true picture of this kind of first period before the world to come? Yeah. It's good you raised it. Obviously because he's so glorious. Uh, he, he is in glory, isn't he? He is the king of kings. Now whatever goes through in the book of Revelation, we see him glorious and lifted up. In Revelation chapter 10 also, maybe uh, while these bad things are described, the Lord reveals to John what's actually going to happen in Revelation chapter 10. There's an interlude of him. 
Revelation chapter 10, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was on his head. Praise God. Rainbow belongs to Jesus Christ. His face was like the sun and feet like pillars of fire. So if you want to have a rainbow on your Facebook profile, that's for Jesus Christ. But, but right now don't do that. Because, <laughs> but rainbow belongs to Jesus Christ. Uh, this is Christ. So John is given in between the trouble, terrible trouble, isn't it? By chapter 9 is terrible trouble. But John is given a view of uh, Christ. It's a scene in heaven. He had a little book open in his hand. He said, right foot on the sea uh, put on the land, cried with a loud voice. Wait. So Christ is still king. And he's shown, showing John that. In Revelation chapter 10, there's an interlude to show who is really king of kings, while others act like kings. Again in Revelation chapter 4, there's another interlude to show that Christ is king. Again and again, while the destruction is being described, Christ's sovereignty as king of this people comes to strong display. That he comforts them, he keeps them safe, and is operating all the time between heaven and earth. One more question. So there won't be any more studies uh, till next year. Unless you demand one. Yes. 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 Um, so the, you know about the stone, right? Which is the church. You said it's gathering momentum. Yes. So does it say more about what the church should be doing? As how is it gathering the momentum? Right now. Yes. Yeah. How is it doing it, or what should it be doing? Yes. This is a stone cut, not not with God, man's hand. God who cuts the stone. And when it's cut, it comes out of him. And Jesus was the Petra. And on this Petra, I built my church. And Peter was told, you are a little Petros. When he was first of all that in John chapter 1, he said, no, thank you. You think I'm a little girl? Huh. I'm the biggest rock in the Sea of Galilee. And he went off. Till Jesus met with him again in Luke chapter 5 and called him. So this big rock is Jesus out of whom is cut the messianic community got the point messiah is the big rock i'm referring to daniel chapter 2 out of it god's hand not a man's hand cuts out a small little stone to deal with this mighty big huge image so in daniel's time who won daniel or never daniel Daniel so what? Nebuchadnezzar made a global decree saying Daniel's God is God. Of course he had quite a few exercises. He went through a lot of troubles before he finally understood this. He understands, then he misunderstands, understands, misunderstands. Third time he understood Daniel chapter 4 and he passes into history having made now. Imagine Putin saying. I believe in Jesus Christ. Now it has been put to his mouth that it's God's business to forgive the terrorists and his business to send them up there. But, but that's not true. That, that was just a fake thing. You know? uh, but imagine a world leader saying this. Nebuchadnezzar was the world leader of that time. And he got it documented in his royal records. That's how Magi from Babylon knew to come for Christ's birth. Daniel 9 has very specific Date and prophecy when Christ will be born. Daniel 9 26. All of Babylon, all astrologers, Chaldeans, all those chaps knew this prophecy. Daniel was so well known. So in Daniel's time, Daniel beat the head. And in our time, we have to beat the feet. Only that, this fellow has now is pretty big. But it's the same little stone. Then he looked very small still in his time. He and his three friends. In a huge royal court of tremendous splendor apparently. Babylon was full of glory, cigarette and a lot of technical things. But the little stone won. In David's time, little stone won. Correct? In our time also, 
we can take courage. Raphael asked, how do we increase the momentum? Sunday is every week. <laughs> and Christian is present on Sunday and hopefully a little early. And they come for a Bible study like this. Few other things were failed. They think I'm telling them if I go on. Uh, of course, the pitch is that what Jesus has made, this is a real competition you have to understand. We have to work with the image, get our wealth out of the image, because Jesus translates treasure out of this kingdom into this little stone. That's why you are there in the kingdom. Are you listening? Isaiah 45. He translates treasure out of that kingdom for his purposes. So this stone was never defeated. Where God is behind that stone. In every century, there was a church that didn't die. In all of papal medieval reign, God's church was still there. But its toughest challenge is coming. But the story is really Two things I preached last Sunday was that every wine looks up itself and every wine know that our best identity is that we belong to this vineyard. Never mind our background, what kind of tree we were in the past. Our best identity is that we are part of his vineyard who for which he gave his life and his committed to it, unlimited all the time, because we are his winter. And winter is tender, it's slender, but Jesus keeps it. He sings a song for it. God bless you. Still have uh, This book is not people friendly, but it has all these details. Maybe some another day we will we will go through this also. But so that it will be easier for you to read. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sol. Thank you, Lord. The book of Revelation carries a blessing for those who read it, those who read it, and those who listen. Thank you, Lord, for the true revelation of who Jesus is right now. Is no more the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. John the Baptist described that he, the Lion of Judah, the roaring Lion of Judah, all powerful, full of authority, full of glory, full of power. Lord, it doesn't matter what we are going through and what we have to face. Thank you for the revelation so that we are in time, we are never out of time, and we are quite aware of what is happening around us. We are in keeping with the history, with all the world events of God. This is exactly what you have described in the word of God, Father. Thank you for proving that the word is true. That every prophecy in the Bible is true. Thank you, Father, that any circumstances, whatever challenges we are to face, Lord, all we got to do is look to Jesus, the true author and the perfect of our faith. At the same time, Lord, to be aware of the peace, the cunningness, the quietness, and the, the falseness of the peace. He is, he is an imitator. He just like to do and Lord create confusion among the believers. Lord, let understanding, let knowledge and wisdom come into every heart by just reading this book and Lord especially tonight as we heard the word of God is found in God. Lord, we pray, Father, tonight, Lord. This is a time to think about our loved ones, those who do not know Jesus, our father, our mother, our brothers, sisters, our uncles, aunts, our cousins, our friends, and every eye cost that we have not spoken about Jesus. Lord, the time is moving fast. Lord, the Lord, end times are just close by. Let us not be like the foolish virgins who were caught unawares and the bridegroom came there. They were not ready with the oil, the 
your, your lamps are not trimmed and they missed out on the right of revenue. Remember that Jesus, God is preparing a holy, pure, spotless bride, the church, for his son. Lord, with a sound of trumpet and a, with a shout, when Jesus comes, the church will be taken up. And the church has to be pure, has to be holy, has to be spotless. Because God says, Lord, be holy as, as much as I am holy. Without holiness, you will not see the Lord. And I pray, Father, tonight that we will not keep postponing or speaking to our loved ones, our icons. Lord, let the love of God compel us and the fear of God that we persuade me the will of God says. Lord, let the fear of God that we go, that fear of Lord, not obeying the word of God, the great commission, the one and only commission that you have given to each one of us. Go into the word of the of the Lord will come. Whoever will, whoever believes will be saved, whoever will not will be condemned. We don't want any one of our loved ones to be among the condemned. Lord, we want to Lord move them from flesh to the elect. So many of our loved ones. We have been sure, shall we speak? Lord, we've been postponing and postponing and praying. This is the time. This is the time that the word of God will stir up the spirit within us. Lord, compel us, persuade us to go and do what we have to do, to obey the great commission. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for tonight, for Brother Lali, for explaining to us so simply and bringing urgency to our hearts, Father. So Lord, we thank you that we will go home and once again read through the word of God. We will meditate on it and not only meditate, but we will act on it. In Jesus.